Super. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome. It's great to see um, folks coming back. And um, we're going to start off with a few reminders of where we left off during Summit Session 3. And then I want to make a special announcement regarding some upcoming spotlight development work at Stanford um, in 2024, which I hope will be um, encouraging to folks here. You can see in the agenda that um, I've linked to this, this sort of list of reminders of, of where we left off in, in session three. Um, so by the end of session three, um, we, had, we had tentatively set up three working groups, one for accessibility, one for sustainability, GitHub cleanup, and PR handling, and one for documentation and deployment. Um, those groups were set up based upon the community roadmap that you all contributed to, um, where you, you listed your, your priorities and, and concerns, as well as some discussion that we had where you, where you listed, I think, your top, your, your top, um, some of your top priorities. So you all have been busy, hard at work over these past three months. Um, uh, meeting and I know sometimes uh, scheduling meetings has been a challenge for some because we're all so busy. But I I definitely know that there's been activity and I joined a couple of groups for um um for an individual meeting each uh, to see how things were going. And we did provide a list of de deliverables and and I I as I said in my um in my Slack message. I didn't want people to feel like, oh my gosh, we didn't quite get this done. Should I maybe not come? Please, I'm glad you're here. We wanna hear what you talked about. Maybe you have this list that we asked for, maybe you don't, but it would just be good to hear um, about your discussions and what you feel you were able to accomplish. So that was a list of, of prioritized working group goals, an estimate of what can be accomplished in a year. Um, perhaps stated as a minimum maximum, an estimate of how many people in hours per month for each is recommended to maintain the group after June, if desired. And, and then of course you all were, were encouraged to, to start working on tasks as time, um, time allows. So um, now let me talk a little, a very briefly, give you a brief overview of what's up at Stanford. I am so excited. <laughs> <laughs> that um, we finally have been um, allocated developer and UX resources to work on exhibits, which is our instance of Spotlight. And plus, we will be doing some work on the Spotlight core application. Um, our planning work for our first work cycle, which starts at the end of August, but our planning period for that is kicking off at the end of next week. Um, and how that works at Stanford is that is to some extent, the engineering manager is involved in planning, but she will sort of back away after we kind of get going. Me as the product owner, um, Alan, who's in attendance here today as the um, UX designer, um, Steve Taylor, who's also here today, is the Scrum Master, and then Corey Lown, who will be the technical lead for the work cycle. We anticipate having, dare I say, not only one work cycle, but, but probably even two back to back. Um, we'll probably be working through the end of the year, I think. Um, I, I hope that this is great news, of course, for us at Stanford, but I hope it's going to trickle out into the community as well, because we're going to have dedicated um, people working on it. So um, if, if there are issues that come up that we're able to prioritize and incorporate for the Spotlight Core application, you know, we can sort of, we can consider doing that or at least... Um, issues might be able to get a little bit more focused attention. So does, before I move on about that, does, does anybody have any specific questions?
Yeah, I'm 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 just I'm just really excited. It feels like we are able to put our money where our mouth is. And I think it's really um, I think it's really excellent, um, excellent news. OK, so um, next, what we want to what we want to do is do a working group report outs. And what we're suggesting here, and I'm using for the first time, I didn't realize until recently that Zoom has these uh, built-in apps and one of them is a timer. So I'm gonna be using the timers to, um, uh, to, time, to time these sessions. We're suggesting seven minutes for each group to report and, and five minutes for each group to ask for questions and discussion. So, um, who, which group might like to go first? We can. Uh, we're with the accessibility group. I'm okay, Sarah. I'm going to start the timer, Sarah. Thank you so much for volunteering. Sure. Um, so I'm Sarah Chintambi um, at Cornell University, library application developer. And um, we've in the accessibility working group have met three times during this last period um, with um, a great group of people that we all have different things to contribute, different titles at our organizations. Um, so our working groups that we prioritized, um, first is compliance with WCAG-based standards. Um, we have several issues that we've outlined that we'd like to prioritize. Um, the second, um, goal would be organizing the spotlight repo to facilitate community contributions. And I'm wondering how much of these ideas overlap the other working group, actually. But um, some of the ideas there are um, introducing issue templates. Um, mostly we're concerned about the accessibility issues, but um, once you introduce one template, it affects the repo. Um, so we have just some other suggestions. I've put it up in the Slack channel. Um, and that also involves grooming the issues. The current issues, um, for the most part, don't look like they're labeled. So it is kind of hard to navigate when you first go there. Um, we also have a goal for cross-institutional scheduling for a possible sprint. Um, and we need to determine when that could take place and how long that sprint might be for and how many people might want to get involved in that. And we'd like to do an accessibility review for an out of the box spotlight instance, um, which would include really identifying like what is the um, core versus institution specific um, issues that we have, which is unclear to actually a lot of us. So um, clearing that up might help before we do um, that sprint. And let's see here. What can we accomplish in a year? Um, at minimum, we'd like to really get organized, schedule, plan, and prior prioritize those accessibility issues. Um, what we'd like to do is get that review for the spotlight instance um, and achieve some of our um, accessibility goals, some of the issues we've pulled out. And um, of course, the greatest thing we could do is be WCAG compliant at the end of the year. And um, I, th I think that's, I think that's it. <laughs> Am I way under the timer? <laughs> you you are way under the timer. So um, I'm going to let it continue to run because you can use this for discussion for anybody who would like to um, weigh in. And then I'll add another three minutes. I did add a comment um, about um, you're likely uh, adding alt text field to core spotlight. I, I am like 99% confident that we have to do that. We, we have to do that. So I think that that's going to be happening at Stanford and will be in Spotlight Core. So um, yeah, thank you, Alan, for the thumbs up. I mean, this is like one of one of the one of a list of many accessibility things, but this is just so obvious um, to right. me. Um, 
So I think that'll be, uh, that right there is already an example of um, the fact that we're rolling up our sleeves, what we can, what we'll be able to give back to the community, which I'm happy, happy. That's great news. Anybody else, any, any, anybody else who participated in that group, who, who wanted to contribute um, some comments or um, any, any particular challenging things that you ran into? I can add, I think we had some difficulty estimating the people and hours required per month, just because it seems to be such an institution specific question. Um, obviously, as you mentioned, at Stanford, we'll have dedicated time. And so I kind of personally removed myself from answering mm -hmm. that question. Um, but I think it's an important one because as Sarah noted, we would like to have crossed institutional scheduling of sprints, especially if we are doing accessibility testing on a core instance, it would be great for, you know, people at various institutions in the accessibility group to be able to look at that um, and coordinating on that. So maybe that's something that will become clearer as we progress uh, and we can kind of do the scheduling um, and or come back to that question as we have more information about uh, Stanford availability for me in particular, but also folks at other institutions and who might the de dedicated developers be, et cetera, um, setting up that core instance. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. One of the other things that's been happening here at Stanford um, amongst amongst our entire department, but but um, definitely spearheaded by our director is a really serious discussion about how we can um, do sort of a, a better job of contributing to open source communities and how we can help shape those and what those communities are. Um, Spotlight, of course, is certainly one of those. And um, this these discussions are happening in parallel um, to, of course, all of our all of our other work. And um, I'm really anxious to get back to our director, Tom Kramer, and find out what new things are happening in that regard. So that'll that'll also, um, you know, sort of contribute back, uh, percolate back to the work that we're doing together. The other thing I'd like to add is that Sarah has already done great work setting up GitHub issue templates, and we've circulated that in the Spotlight channels and also uh, internally at Stanford with developers for feedback. So I think that's already more or less checked off. I'm not sure if it's been actually added to the repo yet, but um, we're coming. Oh, time's up. Yeah. Um, but I but you get three more minutes. Uh, then I'll just answer that real quick. Um, I was I, I can do that and I'll open a pull request for that to get even further feedback. But um, I was kind of waiting for anything else to trickle in uh, before this meeting and but I can do that. <laughs> Sarah, I saw that you got uh, two thumbs up in the in the um. <laughs> in the channel and Huda, Huda here just said that the templates are awesome. So um, you've got some, uh, I, I didn't see any objections. Okay, that sounds great. Um, there was talk about doing some accessibility review. I'm wondering if you thought about adding like a accessibility test to part of the course suite. So like when people contribute, they have to pass the accessibility test before being able to merge. It's a great idea. Um, designated testers for accessibility, basically. That's not something we thought of actually, but we can we can discuss that in our next group meeting. Nikki, are you referring to like a plugin? Uh, our spec has um, an axe like test suite. And so you can tie it to each page 
and make sure it passes each time. We have it set up on a number of our repos. That sounds great. And I, I think Stanford developers, yourself in particular, can certainly contribute that when we start up the work cycle or the planning, since you're familiar already. Great suggestion. Agreed, that sounds great. Any other thoughts or discussion items here? Well, I'll just briefly say that, uh, just, just state that, that the um, sustainability group, uh, we, we did indeed like uh, think about some of the same issues of um, how would we do, you know, like uh, community sprints would be a, a, a organizing those would be uh, an aspect of, of, of both of these. Um, we, we didn't crack that for sure. Um, and then um, what you're talking about with um, like labeling issues and issue maintenance is definitely a, a key part of sustainability. So I'm uh, glad to see they're mentioned here too. Well, great. I'm, I'm going to let the clock run so you all can hear the lovely music again. We're about ready to run out. <laughs> Okay, um, what group would like to go next? Uh, I can jump in. Sustainability. Great, thank you. All right. Um, so we did not manage to meet all three times. Um, and I think that uh, that was, I mean, in summary, it's because it's scary. And and I think I think that like we initially knew that um, it became obvious that determining specific estimates were not going to come out of um, just three short meetings. Um, so I'm going to start with, and, and some of this is kind of my editorializing. Um, so so uh, certainly, Matthew, pop in if if you think I'm getting it wrong. But um, I think that what we found is that Spotlight is in a state that discourages contribution because of the high barrier to entry. Um, the combination of being out of date, inactive, and having kind of questionable test coverage uh, leads to kind of a, a feeling of uncertainty, um, especially for developers, which of course flows into people who would want to use the product. They're also scared. Um, so, you know, we're finding that even even people like within Stanford who have had experience with Spotlight are apprehensive to engage in in a serious way without, you know, um, time and resources being dedicated to it um, because we can't just pop in and do a little bit of work. So certainly like community members wouldn't want to just make a casual contribution. Um, so we think that increasing community confidence in the project lowering that barrier to entry is going to be like a key driver, at least initially for sustainability. Like it's, it's, um, that's sort of the starting point and, and sort of the, the grander issues of sustainability that we wanted to discuss, to discuss sort of fell to the, the background. Like these are the things that need to happen first. Um, and so the things we were talking about specifically, you know, maintenance, there's just, there's a, a laundry list. And I, if you look at the document, there's, you know, I list a few of them here, um, Rails, Blacklight, Bootstrap. Um, there's some unsupported libraries in there. There's there's a lot of things lurking that just haven't been touched and need to be updated. Um, and that that creates that sense of entanglement, um, you know, that that apprehension. You don't want to touch it because you're going to break everything if you if you start pulling on one thread. Um, the second concern is kind of just general activity, like people don't want to contribute to, well, they're less likely, I think, to contribute to a, a, a project that doesn't have like a clear sense of activity and process. Um, and so in order to make it look like an active living project, you know, we need to have, and we all know this, right? Like these are the basic things, like we need to have um, consistent PR review, like both existing and, and um, new PRs People need to be, you know, um, there's no, as far as I know, process for determining 
who has that power. I don't think anybody feels empowered to just uh, do that sort of thing themselves right now. Um, issue review, there's you know clearly a bunch of issues there that are years old. Um, they need to be cleaned up. They need to be triaged for if they're still relevant. Um, as far as we know, there's no uh, existing process for triage of incoming issues. Who has that responsibility? Who's empowered to do those things? Uh, re regular dependency updates, like that's a really low hanging fruit on, you know, um, if you're a developer or a potential adopter of the project, if it's being kept up to date and it's secure, like, um, you know, you're not going to use it if it doesn't look like anybody's just doing the basic care and feeding. Um, we think it's going to be really important to increase tra transparency on how that, how that gets done. Like, how do you become a contributor? How um, even just like, it, where does this all happen? Like, uh, and the next point is just that, like, I think for all of these things, um, they need to be broadcast in some way, whether that's in the Slack channel or, you know, newsletter or whatnot. Like, um, it's just kind of radio silence right now. Um, and then uh, a roadmap. I think there was a general sense of um, nobody knows where this is going. And I think this is secondary, but, um, and this is maybe pushing into past, like the developer standpoint, a lot of these things are developer focused. Um, but in terms of increasing adoption at other institutions, um, I found it's important that that people want to know where it's going. Like they they know where it is, maybe, but um, if if they're on the fence on if this is the right product, um, they really like to see a roadmap. And then, yeah, improving developer experience. Uh, I kind of touched on this, but when we were looking through things, you know, it became apparent that um, I could touch various parts of the code and not break tests. And so that does not inspire confidence. Um, if you just want to make like a casual change, um, it, it gives you that sense of, oh no, even if I want to fix what seems like a minor issue, I'm going to have to do a deep dive on verifying that I didn't totally break everything. Um, and then something that kept coming up is just, uh, it feels like there are, there's some polish needed for the kind of out of the box experience, um, both for developers and for, for like project managers or planners. Uh, it's not like readily apparent how some things are expected to work or what you could do, what the, what the capabilities of the, the project are, because it can do some, you know, very impressive things. But out of the box, like it doesn't communicate that very well. Um, so yeah, I, I guess in summary, like um, the I think the most important thing for initial sustainability is is just getting it up to date and making it less uh, scary for people to start using and con contributing to. Okay. Um, Time's up. There's, thank you, Steve. Um, here, I'm now starting your three minutes of discussion time. Yeah, just to just to add, really, that the um, I think the roadmap is is an important one. Um, one of the aspects I think of sustainability is um, as institutions develop the application is that being contributed back into the core application or is everyone kind of diverging uh because uh, it's much more effective if we can all uh, benefit from uh features that we've uh that other people have wanted and have developed um, so yeah that that seemed to be an important thing and it does sort of um yeah, yeah some of this overlaps a bit with the documentation uh, side, you know, what is it meant to do um, and uh, how you're meant to get it to work. Um, so obviously we'll come on to that in a sec.
Thanks for the note cap note taking help. That's um, appreciated, folks. And I see that you all put a link a link here to um, to your last um, meeting, which I haven't had 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 a chance to um, I haven't had a chance to open that up. So hopefully we have a little bit of redundancy here. Other comments or questions? You know, uh, given the concerns that um, this particular group has raised, which I think are commonly shared, you know, it's a pretty common experience for many of us, but this this is a an area where, again, um, I don't want to make it sound like um, we're promising the moon at Stanford, but I just I just also really know that because we have dedicated time for the next many months to work on this, that we're going to be able to, um, we can't carry it alone, but we're going to be able to start making a significant dent in some of these things. And so um, we look forward to having, having you all partner with us as we're able and um, so that we can, so that we don't lose this momentum that we've, that we've started to build. So Kathy, are you envisioning like maybe um, rolling out um, GitHub tasks or, or something like that, um, that other developers from other institutions could collaborate with Stanford on? I don't know that I'm talking about a community sprint at this time, to be honest. I think that that's something that needs to be scheduled. I think what I'm talking about is, um, I'll be really brief, um, is what I'm talking about is New, our new developers at Stanford becoming much more familiar with the application, which enables them to more quickly answer questions on the fly if they have a few minutes here or there. Um, I envision us, of course, contributing back to, to Spotlight Core. Um, we're going to be doing a blacklight upgrade, uh, maybe a bootstrap upgrade, some other a Rails upgrade, you know, those kinds of things. So th that'll be contributing back. We're going to be doing accessibility things in core, some of them. Um, the alt text is one. So I think that that's going to really push um, push the ball down the road. And, and I think we're going to, it, it's, it is a thing, not the only thing, it's a thing that's going to help drive this community forward. Yeah, that's great. It's great to have the work on the core. I know with some other open source communities, that's sometimes... It's not the the bright and shiny, you know, like upgrading things behind the scenes. Nobody cares about that, but we care a lot about that. That's great. That yeah. we do it. And we'll be working on our own instance as well. Don't get me wrong, but we're very much aware that we've got to do some of this baseline work in core before we can move forward for us and for everybody. So, okay. Last but not least, I believe, who is going to be the spokesperson? I'm happy to do it. <clears throat> I didn't want to take up anyone else's time, but I do think like a big thing that came out from us too and think is the idea of having some governance and some shared governance around this um, to keep the momentum up as well as implement all the changes we're talking about today. Um, you can see that in our our link that we put in. I'm, oh, I should say I'm Jesse Buell from Cornell. Um, hi, Jesse. Um, so we had a good group. We met three times. We, you can see our goals listed there. We've completed some of them already. Um, we wanted to review local documentation that exists at other institutions. Um, in our folder, you'll you can find where we tried to gather this to see discrepancies are in overlap and trying to streamline things into one um, place of documentation. Uh, we also reviewed other similar open source communities to get ideas of how to build documentation. We looked at um, Geo Blacklight, for instance, um, to see what they were doing. And again, a lot of this around shared governance to, to keep this going and organized and everything. 
For the next year, we delineated basic documentation for starting up Spotlight, easier ways to get into deployment. Um, we wanted, we asked for more kind of screenshots, examples of a vanilla Spotlight looking like um, for reference so that it's not just, you know, one institution based or anything or, you know, any of the CSS or any of that stuff that might make it look a little different from place to place. Uh, we're going to, we were looking at the GitHub Wiki as our home for documentation. Um, uh, we wanted to make sure that the bullets that exist currently on the Wiki um, link to actual pages or content because some of them are just placeholders right now. Uh, the next step was to define mechanisms for ensuring documentation is correct, correct, and then also to make suggestions for documentation standards for PRs. Maybe that's not our place. Um, I'm not sure if it belongs to another group or anything, but we put it in there. Um, and then in our future, we talked about flooring other non-exhibit or out of the ordinary use cases for Spotlight. That was just kind of something we were curious about, exploring ways of sharing information about institutional work, kind of like a show and tell page, basically, of different cool things that we're all working on, and provide a triage board with issues ordered by priority to further encourage community work. And then in estimation down there, I gave probably a very specific thing, but it's just an estimation of thinking about a group working, <clears throat> you know, four to six hours a month, um, monthly meetings maybe, and then, you know, three to five hours on research and documentation across um, the members. We talked about the benefit of having documentation and proposed best practices vetted by a spotlight governance committee. So it's not, so it's, there's a lot of people contributing to the idea of what we should be doing as for best practices and, and what we should um, accomplish in documentation and just the benefit of having a variety of institutions and different types of institutions contributing to this proposed governance committee or these individual working groups, however it pans out, um, would only benefit all of us. So that is it in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, did anybody else um, who was participating in that group have uh, comments or contributions? Yes, um, I think there's one thing that we did find really needs to be basically established, and that is the baseline version of a working version of Spotlight to document, because uh, again and again, when I, I mean, I've never yet come across an over-documented GitHub repository, but um, there's usually nothing to tell you whether the documentation was written at the beginning of the project, part of the way through the project, the end of the project. And it would be good as we are sort of making a restart to establish a baseline and say, well, we're documenting this version, which we know broadly is working. And if we change anything in this version, then we probably have some sort of commitment to go back and rewrite the documentation during this phase. Anyone else or questions? I'll just say, I think we made a lot of headway, um, but it we, uh, maybe we're, were hindered because there was so much overlap with the other groups. So again, just kind of a central place to have all of these, everyone working on it talk would probably have benefited us um, to get even more work done. Um, I will make, I will make one comment here. Let's see, you have on the future list, exploring ways of sharing information about institutional work on various aspects of spotlight. 
So this really dovetails with the um, Spotlight Service Community Group that Vanessa and I and one other person who's now retired uh, ran for, I don't know, how long did we run that? Two to three years, something like that. Three years, maybe, Vanessa. Um, and we met either every every month or every other month. And um, it was um, certainly developers, you know, would have been welcome. It was a little bit more of a focus on um, uh, service managers or curators or exhibit creators. We would have demos of exhibits that were that were sort of uh, represented. We felt represented more unique use cases, you know, for Spotlight. Um, and so it had it had a little bit of more of a curator type um, and service support type focus. Um, I think that was just the seven minutes. So I'm going to start where I'm going to run the additional three. Um, finding some way to incorporate that, I, th I think would be, I think would be good. Um, I, I try to share that uh, for Stanford, for sure. I think maybe many of you might have seen that we had a, we hit a 150 exhibit publication milestone and, we interviewed a, a, a variety of different exhibit um, creators and we um, published those interviews as blog posts for a week. And, and we, we have a lot of documentation um, locally about all of the different ways that people, people use Spotlight. We're always happy to share. We always learn from all of you when, because everybody does things differently. And so, um, finding a way to weave that in to our community, um, I think is worthy of additional discussion. And I won't go on and on. I, Vanessa, I have some ideas about this, but we'll save that for maybe another time. <laughs> Any other comments or questions about documentation and deployment? Yep. And I guess the other thing is I'm sure seeing a lot of overlap between the, the last two um, working groups in particular. Um, and it's it's interesting because it you know makes one wonder, would it be more efficient to combine those? I don't know, you know. Um, and and uh, maybe there would be more, more power in getting the two groups together and then, different people could go off and work on different things as time maybe was available. I'm not sure. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I am. Yeah, I added that as a question for our next part in our discussion for next steps. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely dive into that a little bit more in a minute. Well, if nobody has anything else here, I'm gonna cancel the timer and um, I'm gonna turn this over to Vanessa and Vanessa, just uh, a reminder that what we agreed to do is you'll, you'll set up this discussion, but when the actual discussion starts, we're going to end the recording. So people can feel free to um, comment, uh, and not be, not be, not do so publicly. So yeah. over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. So yeah, we wanted to have a little just discussion about where you all want to go next. Um, but we know folks might not feel comfortable maybe saying things now in a, in a group setting. So, um, and that some folks can't, are, aren't able to attend today. So we were also thinking like, Maybe we could start the discussion here, but then have a follow up with like a survey that people could maybe answer anonymously, depending on their comfort level. Um, but some things that we were thinking about discussing, um, and maybe I'll just like read the questions and then stop the the recording. Um, but do you feel you have or can obtain management support to contain to continue participating in Spotlight? working groups, 
what do you need slash want in terms of community to support to continue contributing to Spotlight? Is there anything specific you're looking for in terms of continued community support from Kathy and I? And, you know, then just kind of opening things up for, for general question there. Um, and then we also wanted to check in um, about, you know, what the next steps would be. So um, you, do we want to set up regular meetings? Do we want to continue the working groups? Should they be combined in some way? So I'm going to stop the recording and then we can um, start chatting about those things.